Hello everyone, once again welcome back to my channel Marana Shian. I hope all of you are doing fine and everyone is doing pretty well. I really thank everyone for subscribing my channel and I have reached 500 subscribers. Thank you all once again. Today I thought to have my cap on as my hair is really grown up and it is really messy as it is lockdown time and there is no saloon shop or barber shop available. So I thought to have my cap on to have a decent look. So guys, the topic for today's discussion is centrifugal pump. Centrifugal pump is one of the most commonly used machinery all over the world. Second, and it just comes next to motor. Motor is the one which powers the centrifugal pump. That is, motor is the prime mover and motor is the one which drives the centrifugal pump via shaft. So, major share of world energy goes for pumping fluid from one place to another. Have you ever thought about this? As a mechanical engineer or as a marine engineer, you must know the basic principle of centrifugal pump, the working principle and basic parts of centrifugal pump. What does actually pump do? Pump is the one which converts the mechanical energy of the pump to kinetic energy of the fluid and kinetic energy of the fluid to pressure energy. To be a centrifugal pump, it needs to have two components. Number one, rotating impeller that is curved blade like veins on it. Number two, specially shaped volute casing that is which contain impeller and fluid. Now let's talk much in a descriptive way about centrifugal pump. At the heart of the system is the impeller and casing covers the impeller with fluid filled in it. If you have not watched my video why priming is necessary for centrifugal pump and pump characteristic curve you can go to my description below and check out the link. The impeller is always immersed in water when the impeller is made to rotate via motor through shaft. Water filled inside the casing also starts to rotate. As the water starts to rotate, it creates centrifugal force to the water and water starts to move towards the periphery of the volute casing. As it moves towards the periphery of the volute casing, it creates a partial vacuum at the eye of the impeller. As partial vacuum is being created at the eye of the impeller, the one bar atmospheric pressure pushes the water towards the eye of the impeller and water starts to rush towards the eye of the impeller. As you already know, fluid always travels from a region of high pressure area to a region of low pressure area. Here the same process happens from one bar atmospheric pressure to a region of partial vacuum that is eye of the impeller. Here the mechanical energy is converted to kinetic energy of the fluid by impeller. Now talking about the shape of the casing that is volute casing. Volute casing is basically spiral shaped structure with ever increasing radius. The area of the volute casing increases as it approaches the discharge side. So basically it is ever increasing radius. You might be thinking why the shape of the volute casing is like that as the area keeps on increasing once it approaches the discharge side. So basically there is reason for it. It is very important design for the function of the pump. Here it is where the pump develop pressure that is pressure head. We have discussed earlier impeller is the one which imparts kinetic energy to the fluid but it is only half the equation. Only velocity can't help fluid to travel from one place to another. You need pressure too. So basically volute casing is the one which helps the fluid to generate pressure that is pressure head. Actually pressure head is necessary to overcome gravity that is to move fluid from a region of low level to a region of high level and to overcome various losses like friction loss, shock and eddies offered by the pipe itself. So we have converted mechanical energy to kinetic energy and now we need to convert this particular kinetic energy to pressure energy. How is that possible? Basically there is a science behind it. In plus one I think we have studied Bernoulli's principle. The same principle is applied here too. As the fluid travels through the volute casing, the velocity of the fluid drops. As the area increases towards the discharge side, so basically the velocity here drops and the pressure increases. This is where the Bernoulli's principle comes into picture. That is, as the velocity drops, the pressure increases and vice versa. The fluid pressure and fluid velocity are inversely proportional to each other. 
so by the time the fluid reaches the discharge side there is great deal of pressure for the fluid that is pressure head and it can be transported from one place to another by the great deal of pressure so basically now we have converted the kinetic energy of the fluid to pressure energy and we have converted mechanical energy to kinetic energy of the fluid and kinetic energy of the fluid to pressure energy wow that's hell lot of science thanks to bernoulli so guys this is the basic of the centrifugal pump and i don't want to make the video very long as it will be very boring for you and it won't be an interesting video too so basically this is the basic principle of centrifugal pump and if you find any problem or any difficulty in knowing the principle guys comment down in the comment section and you give your opinion in the comment section too as it will be very helpful for me to bring about a modification and improvisation in my video and yeah guys don't forget to press the subscribe button and press the bell icon for future notification thank you and have a nice day